So today I want to talk about portrait cameras and what I'm looking for in a portrait camera. I do two different styles of portrait photography. One is using flash and one is using continuous light or natural light. So when I'm using flash light, um, this H6 is my favorite camera in the world. For two reasons, one reason, uh, the main reason is a viewfinder is massive and I can manual focus with it and I just find this a dream to use. I'm not looking for all the tricks and that, that the mirrorless have because I'm using flash. The mirrorless doesn't give me anything extra when I'm using flash. So I am 100% happy using this and this is my favorite camera. It's starting to get old now, but it does what I want it to do. When I'm using continuous light, then I want mirrorless. Now, the main reason I want that is because when I use stuff like the Otis at 1.4 or even the Noctilux at 0.95, going through my old uh, DSLR camera, my old Canon, which was a Canon X Mark II, I couldn't see my focus. The viewfinder was so tiny, I could not see my focus point. It was just hit and miss. And I would say, I was only getting about 30% of my pictures in focus. And these are manual focus lenses because I like to use manual focus. I like to use manual everything, but the manual focus is the main thing I'm looking for because then I can pick where I want the focus, which I can't do with an autofocus lens. So that's when the mirrorless comes in. Now, the main benefits of what I want from a mirrorless is number one, I can set my viewfinders up to see what I want to see. So I don't want to see color. I find color distracting in my viewfinder because my picture see, I, my eyes see color, it's not seeing light. So I want to be able to set my viewfinder to monochrome. The other thing is I want to have a focus peaking or something so I can see when the catch light in the model's eye is going off, there's, that's what's in focus. Or if the eyebrows are going off, or if I'm using the tilt shift on a mirrorless camera, I can tilt and shift my focus plane. Now I can see my whole plane where it's going off to make sure that's where I want it to be going off and that's where I want it to be sitting. Because through optical viewfinders, it's near impossible to see that special at shallow depths of field. So when I'm coming now to the mirrorless side of things, I am mainly looking for things in the viewfinder, or some people might want them on the back screen, but I don't use the back screen at all for when I'm shooting. I wanna see things in the viewfinder which make my job easier. So the first thing is I'm gonna be shooting fully manual, M for master. I'm not interested in shooting P for professional, A for advance, S for superstar, auto ISO, because that's when the camera is going to take control. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens with that in a minute. Same with focus. The Sony is amazing with its eye focus. So quick, really, really accurate. But what happens if I don't want it focused on the eye? And my favorite portraiture work, I want to have full control over everything. I want to be able to see what my exposure is doing. I want to see what is getting overexposed. So I want things like zebring or overexposure warnings in the viewfinder. And then I want to be able to see my peaking. So I'm really accurate with my peaking. I also want to not have to go in and chimp all the time because what I'm seeing in the viewfinder before I take the picture is exactly what my final picture is going to be. All right, so yes, I do own a light meter and I just want to show you why I don't put my camera ever into anything but manual on everything, including ISO. So if I just come around here and just take a light meter reading here and I've got a meeting there, the meeting there, they haven't changed one little bit. So as I walk the whole way through the room, it hasn't changed at all. It stayed exactly the same. So I'm gonna dial in and it's 4.5 and a hundredth of a second. Now I've set the ISOs at 1250. So I've set this up at those settings, but I've got it onto auto ISO. So right now it's saying that it's 500, 500 ISO, whereas my light meter was saying it was 1250. 
as I swing this around, you'll see that it's now gone to 640. It's now gone to 800. It's now gone to 12, it's gone to 2000. So just by me swinging this around, wherever I'm pointing the camera is changing the ISO. So you'll see that the picture is staying reasonably the same except you'll see see how that just changed its brightness especially between there that's at 1600 now that's gone to 1250. all right so now i'm going to go to the next extreme where i'm going to put a model in there so i'm going to grab the gimbal off back and she's going to stand round about here so the settings we've got here now are 4.5 a hundredth of a second and we're ISO 100, it's got a little bit lighter since that cloud and rain has disappeared. What's gonna happen now, as I move around back, so what you'll see, it doesn't matter what wall I put behind back, the exposure on back has stayed exactly the same. So I've just changed this to aperture priority and I've left it at uh, f4.5 and it's now changed my exposure to uh, one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, and as I swing round back, it is now one hundred and sixty one hundred and twenty fifth of a second. So it's changing. If you just watch Beck's face as I go round, see the exposures changing. So the whole time, it doesn't matter where I go, the exposures changing based on what the camera is seeing in the foreground and the background. So now I've explained to you why I want to be manual focus is because I want to choose my focal point. I also want to be in manual exposure so I can set the exposure and I don't want anything in the background to change my exposures. So now if I come back to the cameras to explain what I am looking for in a camera. Uh, one of them is a highlight alert, which is in very few cameras. A lot of them have it in, once you've taken the picture, you can see it in the uh, display. So when you bring the picture back up by going to a, a certain area in your menu of display, you can see the highlight alert going off or in cameras like the Leica, have it built into the viewfinder so you can see it live. The other thing is something that nearly all video cameras have and all cameras that uh, got the video capability have is a thing called zebring. So what zebring is, it allows you to set a area that zebras will come up on the screen in the area that you've told it to look at. So to give you an example in a video situation, if we were videoing Beck, if she was a reporter and we had to do five or six different jobs, she'd be most likely sitting around about the 75, which is about there which means when I'm changing my shutter or my aperture or my ISO, I can get, see how she's fully zebraed in the face there. That is telling me that her face is sitting between 75 and 80. But that's no good to us as photographers because we're gonna end up with zebraing all over Beck's face and we won't be able to see. For video, it's fine. We don't, we're not taking a single shot. She can just talk away and it doesn't matter, we can't see, but we know we've got our exposure right. But I found in photography, if we set it to 100 plus, which is on what Sony allows, this monitor only goes to 105, that'll still work fine. I can now set my exposure just by looking at the zebring. Now I don't want anything to be zebring on Beck's face, so I'm gonna just change my shutter until it goes. Now I've got her exposed, it's that simple. So I, it is this simple for me to get my exposure just come slightly off. So there's nothing overexposing on her face that is now correctly exposed. One problem is, and we found this at our workshops recently, that Canon and Nikon and Hasselblad don't give us that feature in stills. Canon and Nikon have the feature in there for video. But as soon as you go to stills, you do not get that feature. Why do the video people get this feature and not uh, photographers? In fact, a lot of the things that the video people get that we don't get, like in some cameras we even get scopes, which is a whole other story. So the best thing that we can have is a proper overexposure warning and something we can preset. On the Leica, it has that. So I can go in the menu and I can tell it where I want my overexposure to go off at, and I've set that to 245. 
and to get my exposure, it is this easy. So at the moment on 100 ISO, I'm just going to quickly change my ISO, and I'm just going to do it with ISO. See, instantly I've got overexposure. Um, but I would want to be a bit more, let's bring up to a shutter speed that I'm happy with, say 160 of a second, done. Uh, ISO 400, you'll see that's how quick I can see my exposure. So once I've done that, now I'm on f1.4. So at 1.4, so straight into the camera, at 1.4 I can start dialing in and see that little bit of white glitter that you see. And there's the tiniest bit of white glint just in the catch light of her eyes. At 1.4, she's fully sharp. The other thing I could do is I can zoom in on this and have a look at this. And you'll see that little bit of glint that's in her lashes. That is telling me everywhere that I'm seeing that little bit of white is in focus. So the beauty with this is I can, through the viewfinder, see what's in focus and see my exposure in my viewfinder live as I'm working. And that is what I want in the camera. I want one that I don't have to think. Everything is in my viewfinder. So what am I looking for in a, cam in a portrait camera? I want to be able to have my viewfinder in monochrome. So I can do that on Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Leica. There could be other ones that do that, but the other ones I know I can definitely do it on. Next thing I want is focus peaking. And I can do that on uh, Sony, Nikon, Leica, um, the Hasselblad X1D. Well, basically all the cameras I said, plus the Hasselblad X1D, the X that lets me put on a focus peaking. The next thing I want to do is have some visuals in my viewfinder, like a live histogram. I'm not going to talk about um, Nikon, Sony and um, Canon about the live histogram. It's just something I'd really like. And I do know I have got that on my Leica. The next thing is I want at least zebring. I can do it on the Leica, the Fuji and the Sony. Hass uh, Hasselblad, Nikon and Canon don't allow me to have that feature. Or even better, I would like a highlight alert. I get that on the Leica. I want to be able to focus at F1 very easily. On the Leica, originally, I didn't love the white focus peaking. Now I absolutely adore it because all I do is wait to see glitter in the eyes. I know I'm razor sharp on the eyes. So I might be sounding like a Leica fangirl, but it's not that I'm a fangirl of Leica. It's I've bought the Leica because it ticked every single one of those boxes. And I found it the easiest camera in the world for me to work with, with constant or natural light. The one thing that really, really annoys me as especially Canon, Nikon and uh, Hasselblad, the whole idea of replacing an optical viewfinder with a TV screen is to give the photographer somewhere to put some live information to make their job easier. Unfortunately, I think that both Nikon and Canon especially are wanting to dumb down their cameras so you don't, you can just be an aperture priority or shutter priority or ISO priority. That is not giving you full control of your camera. It's letting AI control your camera. And what's going to happen is as AI develops more and more and AI starts creating photos, your photos are just going to be like AI because you're going to be following the same rules that AI is doing it. You're going to end up with a lot of nice photos. But as an artist, you've lost all your control. All I would suggest is all you Nikon, Canon and Hasselblad shooters start sending emails. If they've already got it into the video section, how hard is it to move it? So we at least have zebring in our viewfinders so you can get your exposure as quick as I can. I know this is a bit of a rant, but I'm getting very, very annoyed when I'm running a workshop and I can do stuff that because other guys haven't got the same camera brand as me, can't do it. And I want a level and fair playing field. So the more you can get on your emails, and seriously, they won't change it until all you guys start sending emails to Canon, Nikon, and Hasselblad and saying, we want 
at least at the worst we want zebraing because you've already got in our cameras for video. Can you please move that across to the stills? Why should the video guys get all the toys and not the photography guys? Just me on a rant.